I'm glad I fixed it up with God a long time ago. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Said, I'm glad I fixed it up with God a long time ago. Old song we just sang said, my Lord's expecting me. And this I truly know. Amen. Is he looking for you this morning? He said in his word, they that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Oh, you got to be looking for him this morning. Got to be looking for him this morning. It's good to be back into the house of the living God this morning. Amen. And to be among God's people that love Him and are committed to Him this morning. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, I want you to go with me to a scripture I talked to you about the other night. I told you I might be preaching from there today, and I am. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5. And verse 17. Brother Small said it this morning in Sunday school while you're standing with me. Finding your place in God's word. I was thinking to say, brother, if you have it, put it up on the screen for me. Thank you. The brother said it this morning in our Sunday school lesson. Folks are mixed up nowadays. And it's sad when it's a lot of Christians that are mixed up. Brother Hunt, when it comes to God's Word. We have so many misconceived ideas of God's Word. And I, I'm persuaded to believe if you're a child of God, and you'll study this book and stay in the Word of God, man can't lead you wrong. But you got to stay in the book. Got to stay on your knees. You got to seek the Lord. If any man lack understanding, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. No good thing, he said, will I withhold from my children. Huh? If you want to know this book, you can know this book. Huh? And I may be ridiculed because I preach it so hard, but it's all right because it doesn't change. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word never changes, folks. Generations may change. Churches may change. People may change. But God never changes. His word will stay the same. And if that brings ridicule upon me, so be it. I'll continue to preach it always until he comes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Go back and read that with me together. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Read on with me. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Father God, thank you for the reading of your word this morning. Thy word, O Lord, David said, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. David also declared in Psalms 119, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I pray, O oh Lord God, help us in this day and hour, in this 21st century church, to study thy word that we may show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Here a little, there a little. Oh God, help us to seek your guidance and your direction. To take on the characteristics of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
and become the true men and women of God that you've called us to be, Lord. And Lord, I'll be forever grateful unto you and I'll thank you and I'll praise you, Lord, for all that you do for us and bless us with. Now, Holy Ghost of God, have your way in this service today. Let the gifts of your Spirit be operated among us. Let the gifts of knowledge and wisdom and and the gift of tongues and interpretation, Lord, be espoused among us today, O God. That we may walk in your Spirit, Lord. That we fulfill not the lust of the flesh. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Shake a few hands. Tell them it's good to see them here in the house of the Lord this Sunday morning. Question that's been in my spirit this week. And because of some things that was brought to my attention, I guess that's why the Lord brought it to my spirit this week. I want to talk to you on the subject to be in Christ. Very simple. But could be confusion to a lot of folk. To me it's simple. What does it exactly mean to be in Christ. Let's see what it's not. It is not mental affirmation. In other words, millions of people believe in Jesus Christ, believe that He was the Son of God, Believe all the right things, but yet are not saved. Did you get that this morning? They can believe in this, that, and the other, but yet still not be saved. So merely mentally affirming something carries no weight. Just to say, I believe the Bible. I believe that Jesus was God's only son. I believe Jesus was born of a virgin Mary. Does not save your soul. You see, hundreds of millions of people follow Muhammad. They believe in him and the teachings of the Quran. But it can't save them. For there is, the Bible says, there is no other name given under heaven whereby a man can be saved, but through and by the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. So I understand today, I could take it a little bit further this morning in some notes that I jotted down here. In Christ has little to do with joining a particular church. Or believing a certain doctrine. Or even getting water baptized. Or taking in the Lord's Supper and etc. and on and on. Does not mean that you're saved. Does not mean that you are in Christ. There's a big difference this morning, brothers, in knowing about something and being in something. So surely I'm appalled at many Christians that are really not sure about their salvation. Help me, Holy Ghost. They're really not sure because they're so confused. I shared on Wednesday night That there's a lot of folks today that don't believe, and I've heard it this week. In the laying on of hands, it's not biblical anymore. That the gifts of the Spirit was for the early church, and it's not for us today. Speaking in tongues is done away with.
So you tell me if you don't believe in laying on hands and you are a minister of Christ or a child of God and you go to the hospital to pray for somebody, what's the use? Huh? Because if you don't believe in divine healing as one of the gifts of the Spirit, then you're wasting your time to pray for somebody. I may not get many old amens this morning, but hey, I'm going to preach the Word of God anyhow. A lot of folks are in church, but not in Christ. A lot of folks have joined the church role, but they've not joined in Christ. A lot of people got a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. He said, from such, turn away. Don't have no dealings with them. If I know a man or a woman of God that's not preaching and teaching this book, I have no business hanging out with them. I know this is a little tight this morning. But I, I'm, I'm so tired of children of God supposedly know that they're saved, but yet they're confused. Huh? I may not know who all my kinfolk are because some of them I don't want to know. Huh? They tell me when I moved in this area because I was a Macpherson. I had to be kin to all of them in Beaver Dam. I don't talk like them Macphersons. They slow. Huh? They talk different than I do. I said, secondly, I don't have the money they have. And I may not know all of those things, but I tell you what I do know. I know that 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 I've been born again and I've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and that I am in Christ and I'm in with him today and he's in me and we abide together. I can tell you that much. This thing in Christ is universal. For the Bible said, if any man be, if any man be in Christ, doesn't matter what you were before. In Christ, one must take upon himself. And I wrote down just a couple of things before I begin too much. The nature of Christ. We must take on the characteristics of Christ. The whole process, the leading, the direction of the philosophic object or person in whom one is believing and that one is Jesus Christ. To be in Christ. Go to John chapter 15 with me. You see, to be in Christ is first and foremost is a heartfelt experience. You see, one accepts Christ in their heart, exhibiting faith in Him. And the moment this is done, that person is saved. It's not a hard thing. I don't have a great education, but I have figured that out. John 15 declared, you there with me? Because I want you to follow me along today. Verses four through six. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth, say it with me, in me. And I 
In him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, Jesus said, ye can do nothing. If a man, if a man, how much more simple can this be, folks? If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you're not in Christ, you're outside of Christ. There is no other two ways to look at this thing, folks. Huh? We're either in Christ or we're not in Christ we're either saved or we're not saved our name is written in the Lamb's book of life or either it's not written in the Lamb's book of life how confusing is that then why do we have preachers preaching that there is another way And I'll probably get some flax from this message too. Got a phone call this week, left me a nasty message. Huh? But it's okay. Because I told my wife, it, God has just put it in my spirit. It's time to stand up against sin and those that are promoting it. You may be a preacher of the gospel, but if you're not preaching this book uh, from cover to cover, from page to page, uh, from doctrine to doctrine, uh, my God Almighty, you're not preaching the truth uh, because the truth will set your soul free. Come on, somebody. Well, you can't talk about this, preacher. You can't talk about that. I can tell you what the Word of God says. And if that convicts your soul, you take it up with God. Huh? The problem is, Brother Hunt, we got too many preachers that won't preach it no more. Because we're afraid we're going to lose our congregations. Huh? You're right, preacher. We're afraid our salary is going to be cut. Huh? I'm not too old to get a job if I need to get one. I'll get one before I compromise this book. I said I'll get one before I compromise this word and put my soul in jeopardy, sister Carter, and risk my soul going to a devil's hell. If this Bible says it's wrong, it is wrong. And if you're not in Christ, you're outside of Christ. If you're in Christ, you're saved and on your way to heaven. If you're outside of Christ, you're on your way to hell. And hell will be your home. What are you telling me? Jesus said, abide in me. And I in you. Some of you wondering about this tube up here. Can I just do a little demonstration for you this morning? This tube is right here. This is Christ, okay? Christ is over here and I'm over here. I'm not in Christ. Come on, somebody. Huh? Huh? Because as long as I'm over here and Christ is over there, that means we're not together. But the moment that I step from, from being me and deny myself, and I step inside of Christ, yeah, when I step inside this tube, which represents Jesus Christ, confirms God's word in John 15. If ye abide in me, and I abide in you, ye are mine, and 
I am yours. How many do I have this morning that's abiding in Jesus Christ? And you know that you know that you know that you are in Christ and Christ is inside of you. And the moment you put him down and step outside, you are no longer in Christ. How much more simple can that be? But yet children and preachers are confused about what it means to be in Christ. You see, when I step back in Christ, I'm surrounded by Him. Are you with me? He protects me. He keeps me. And if I abide in him long enough, I'll start looking like him. Woo, go ahead, boy. Hey, man. Huh? Preacher William, if I stay in him long enough, I'll start acting like him a little bit. I, I might even start talking about him a little bit. Ah, come on, somebody, church of God. I said, as long as I stay in him, sister Yvonne, the more I want to be like him, the more I desire him, the more I want him, the more I love him, sister Carter, the more I want to know about him because the more he gets inside of me, the more I get inside of him. I said, the more that I get inside of him, the more he gets inside of me and he becomes one with me and I with one with him we gotta be in Christ to be not in Christ is to be outside of him and there are many of folks today they want to carry him with him this ain't in the notes, but just stay with me. It's good. Huh? Every once in a while, they want to throw him under his arm and prance around with him like I'm somebody. Huh? And you start telling that individual about him that they're carrying under their and they don't know the first thing about him. Hello. And then we got some imitators that want to act like they inside of him. To be in Christ, you become a brand new creature or creation. See, as long as I was outside of him, preacher, I might have done my stuff. I might have walked my walk and talked my talk. But Sister Yvonne, after a while I quit walking my way. I quit talking about me. And I stepped inside of him. Hallelujah. And he got about ankle deep and then he started getting about waist deep. Woo! Hallelujah. And then he got on up around my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Sister Darcy, help me preach. I feel the Holy One right now. Amen. I feel like that little boy this morning that you sent me a text about, Brother Joy. I about feel the Holy One right now. What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling you this Sunday morning, child of God, when God starts to get all in you, you can't help but every once in a while wave your hand. When God gets all in your spirit, you can't can't help but every once in a while stomp your foot. I said when God gets in you, every once in a while you'll shout, Amen. You'll shout, Praise the Lord. You'll shout, Hallelujah. Do I have anybody in Christ that's in the church of the living God? I said, Do I have anybody that's in Christ here in the chat room, the church of the living God? Is anybody? In Christ. My, 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 my. I feel my helper. I said, I feel my helper this morning. Yeah. 
criticize me if you want to, but I know in whom I have believed. My wife said to me this week, those kind of messages causing my blood to boil. I said, leave it alone. It's okay. They talked about my Jesus. Let them talk about me because he's in me and I am in him. And the servant is no better than his master. I said the servant is no better than his master. Folks just don't want the truth anymore. Huh? Well, small, we're in a generation now where people want you to lie to them. Smooth it over. Sugarcoat it. Make it easy. Tiptoe through the tulips, preacher. Huh? In the last days, men would rather be, believe a lie and be damned, brother preacher, than to believe the truth. I know the truth ain't popular today. Huh? It ain't popular anymore. And people don't want it. But as long as I stay in him and he in me, I plan to walk according to his word. I plan to study God's word to show myself approved. I plan to walk according to his spirit and let my light shine in a world that's full of corruption. Come on, somebody. I said, I plan to live, Brother Jody, every day as if it was my last day here on this earth because I know that I know that I know that one day soon and very soon I'm going to see the king, you see. Hallelujah. He's going to say to me, why didn't you stay in me, son? If you'd have stayed in me, I'd have helped you through your problem. I'd have helped you with your lost children I'd have helped you with your marriage but you gotta stay in me son if you want my blessings you gotta stay connected to the vine we're in a generation now brother Jody that want the blessings but they severed the vine almighty God almighty they've cut the vine they've cut the life cord they've cut the blood flow Yet they want the blessings of being in him. You can't have it both ways, my friend. Somebody said, I want the best of both worlds. That'll be hell, my friend. Because no man can straddle the fence. You're either in him or you're not in him. You're either with me or you're against me, Jesus said. Right? Is that what his word says? I'm preaching you a simple ABC message this morning. But people are confused, Sister Kay, about this gospel message. You see, to be in Christ means I don't lie anymore. To be in Christ means I don't look at pornography. To be in Christ means I walk according to his gospel. To be in Christ, I've got to let my light shine. Why? Because I am a reflection of him that lives on the inside of me. Huh? Holy Ghost Except, except, except ye abide in me and I in you. The branches cannot do nothing. You hear me? They'll be cut off and cast into the fire. 
and be burned. That's hell, friend. That's hell. Take it any way you want to. That's hell. Huh? That's Sheol. That's the place of the dead. Huh? That's the place of outer darkness. Huh? And I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that many preachers are going to stand before God Almighty guilty. Paul said, for three years I ceased not to warn you night and day. Come on, somebody! For three years I ceased not to warn you night and day and to tell you, you got to quit sinning. you got to get out of the sinning business and stay in Jesus Christ. I'm going to be very brave and strong this morning, but I hope you'll love me afterwards. Somebody said this morning we got atheists teaching Bible. We've got homosexuals and adulterers singing in the choir. Amen. We got them teaching Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Bible said you are a new creation. Outside of Christ, you might become anything. Well, I'll never be that. Don't you say what you won't never do. Because as long as you're just a forefront, a put on, huh? In a store face casing for people. Help me, Brother Jody. You're just in a store case facing for somebody to look at you. As long as you're in that condition, you may become anything. So many today of our folks are outside of Christ. I know this message is hard, but God stung it in my spirit this week. I've ate it, I've slept it, I've, I've contemplated it, I've meditated, I've thought about it. Huh? When you start preaching certain things in this book and leave other things out of this book, you become a hypocrite. Amen. All you're doing is toting him under your arm. Huh? All you're doing is a store's front spectacle for people to look at you. Look how big your church is and how many folks you got in your church. That doesn't impress me anymore. I used to ride around as a little boy and think that was a great thing to have big mega churches and have four or five hundred people attending that local church. And that's okay if that's, that's what it's supposed to be. But my friend, if we're outside of Christ and the man behind the pulpit is outside of Christ, you've got a church on their way to hell uh, along with the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and so I'm sorry if that offends you uh, I'm sorry if that bothers you but it's the truth uh, and I will not apologize uh, I will not back down on it for thus saith the word of the Lord we may lose a few more because of my preaching but it's okay Because when we in the Chadburn Church of God of Prophecy don't want the truth anymore, then I don't need to be here. Because my brothers and sisters, Sister Doris, I've come too far now, you see. I've climbed too many mountaintops and I've walked through too many valleys alone by myself. And Sister Deborah, but you know what I found out when I walked through the valley of the shadow of death? I, I didn't have to fear no evil. You know why, Sister Neely? Because he said, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my, I'm talking about being in Christ. Thou anointest my, my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall do what? Follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever Selah is anybody with me this Sunday morning I 
I'm sorry if this upsets your apple cart. Take it up with Jesus, though. Huh? Anybody wants to call me this week, uh, call, 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 call my ministry board. Roger Small. Jody Griffin. Marty Norris. Give them a call. Don't call me. I'm unavailable. Because huh? I believe they'll stand behind this book. I said I believe they'll stand behind this book. Preacher, I'm like you said this morning, if I'm wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. Huh? But if I'm right in this book, I will not apologize for it. Huh? You see, the Bible said to be in Christ. I, I want to get to a new creation. That's hard to get there this morning. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Listen. I'm making it plain and simple. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, didn't I tell you it was a heart thing? Because in the heart, the heart must be changed. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are you a Christian or you're not? Huh? You're either in him or you're outside of him. You're either on your way to heaven or you're on your way to hell. Are y'all with me this morning? Huh? We like to quote that, 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 that verse there to the lost folks that's coming to know Jesus Christ, but it's to the Christian as well. Got to start in here. Huh? You can dress up and put on a facade all you want to. Huh? Man, you can put on three-piece suits, uh, vest, tie, choke yourself to death. Huh? But if the heart ain't been changed, all you are is a storefront casing, spectacle, showboating. Look at me, look what I am. Huh? Ladies, listen to me. You can take off all your Mary Kay you want to. Huh? And wear your dresses till you trip over them. Huh? And if your heart ain't right with God, you're lost. You're undone. You got to stay in the vine, folks. Huh? If ye abide in me, and I abide in you, that's the only way to make it brothers and sisters huh and I'm going to tell you something when you start telling folks that you'll lose some friendships huh? I remember old brother Keith Speed said one time he got the feeling sorry for himself y'all know brother Keith Speed it's been many many years ago when I was a younger fella heard him preaching a revival telling this story he said, he said I just got the feeling sorry for myself because a lot of my preacher friends started turning against me. They wanted nothing to do with me when I'd go to the assemblies. Huh? They quit calling me for revivals. Huh? And he said, I got the feeling sorry for myself. Huh? Pity party. Huh? He said, and one day God spoke to him in his spirit. Huh? And said, when's the last time you didn't preach somewhere? Have I not opened a door for you every time you ask me to open a door for you to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you ever went without one meal? Huh? Have you ever went without a change of clothes? And on and on, Brother Keith shared some stuff with us that night. And he said, after that, I just, I just felt so low. Why? Because I'd underestimated the power of God. I began to look at man instead of keeping my eyes on God. Huh? Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. 
verse 5 and 6. I'm still talking about being in Christ. I'm trying to get to a new creature here. Hold on. Not by works of righteousness, which I have done, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of what? Regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. John chapter 5, John 5, 24. Jesus said again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, talking about his Father, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You want to know how to be born again this morning and how to walk in his spirit? There it is. Huh? You want to be blessed? Stay in Him. Huh? Don't tote Him under your arm and parade Him around like He's a whatnot that you took off the shelf. That's the way a lot of us do this book right here. We walk in on Sundays and we throw Him on the shelf. Walk out on Sunday morning and dust him off a little bit and grab him and put him under our arm and parade him around. Huh? That's being a hypocrite. Huh? He said to those that did such things, he said, you wash the outside of the platter, but you leave the inside of it undone. Huh? He said, you're just like the scribes and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. Ye are of your father the devil. Is that in the book? Am I in the book? Huh? Huh? You want to make the outside look good. But you want to leave the inside undone. Which is a weightier matter, he says. Huh? What are we doing this morning, children of God? Are we living in Christ or are we living outside the perimeter? If you stay in Christ, I'll tell you what will happen to you. You'll become a new creation. You see, when, when, the small, when, I, when I stay in Christ and I became a new creation in Him, I no longer wanted to go to the clubhouse and dance. I no longer wanted to drink alcohol anymore. I don't want none of those things. But now we're living in a generation that's outside the box. You know, a lot of them say, it's time we get outside the box, preacher. There's trouble outside the box. There's deception outside of the box. And there's a devil of hell waiting outside the box. Huh? Well, bless God, preacher, I'm a, no, I'm a non-traditionalist. <laughs> what is that? Let's huh? live outside the box. Who said you had to have an altar call? Who said you had to sing in the choir? Who said you had to do this and do that? We're non-traditionalists. Mm-hmm. We don't need an altar. I'll tell you what you will need. If you ever get in Christ and he gets in you, you'll find an altar. You'll find this book. And you'll live holy and you'll live righteous and you'll live unspotted before the world. You'll quit committing adultery. Having sex relationships outside of marriage. See, that's what happens to you when you get outside the box. Huh? 
Devil gets in your head, start to think, well, you know what? I, I don't really believe Jesus really said what he meant, meant what he said. Ask Sister Eve. Ask Brother Adam. God said what he said and he meant what he said. Huh? Sister Needy, people look at me sometimes. Why don't you do this, preacher? And why don't you? It's okay. If this book says it ain't okay, it won't be. Are y'all with me this morning? Huh? As long as I stay in the box. You know what I have? Brother Jody, when I stay inside that box in Christ, it'll make me talk right. It, it, it'll make me cover up this flesh. Boy, I'm getting tight now. I know I am. I know it's, I know it's summertime. Huh? And I know you've been practicing all year on your six pack. Hello. Huh? You've been going to the tenting bed just to get ready for summertime. Good God Almighty preach. Boy, I'm on somebody this morning. And I know I'm getting in deep. And I know I'm getting in trouble. But I'm going to tell you one thing. My friend, I'm not out to impress the world. I'm not out to impress Myrtle Beach. I'm not out to impress any of the world. But I want to impress him who lives inside of me. And I inside of him. For we are one in Christ. What are you telling me, preacher? A lot of preachers will say it's okay, but it's not okay. Because when you stay inside of him, he'll not only save you, he'll sanctify you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He'll clean you up. He'll make a new man out of you. He'll make a new woman out of you. I know I'm beating some, 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 some bad waves right now. Huh? Like that message caused my wife's blood to boil. Some of you might be boiling about now. But it's okay. Huh? Jesus said this. There was a time I was in the world. But you see, when I got in him, I got out of the world. For Jesus said it like this, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Huh? Hallelujah. My boy, this is good stuff, preacher. Keep preaching. Huh? You see, a lot of folks in the wintertime, you want to get in him. and the summertime, you want to drop him. We want to drop him. You know why? Because we want to come like the world. We want to run around half naked. We want to go here and go there and lay out a church and miss Wednesday night Bible study. And we want to do all these worldly things and forget about him. And so we drop him. Because walking around in him is a little bit uncomfortable. Huh? Huh? Just don't look good, Sister Jane. All these people in baby suit, and I'm walking around in Jesus. Huh? Come on, I'm going to just tell it like it is. Huh? Put on his clothes, didn't he? Huh? Come on, somebody. Help me out this morning. Amen. Huh? When you're in Christ, it'll make a difference in your life. Huh? Listen to me, ladies. I love you, but you got no business running around with your butt cheeks hanging out of your shorts. 
Hey, get in Christ and you'll cover your behind up. I'm not dumb, I'm not naive, I'm not behind the time. I know what people do. And you want to buy a baby suit top that splits all the way down to here. You want to vote me out after this is over with? Go ahead. But my overseer, some folks tried that at this church here about 10 years ago. Yeah, they did. I called my state overseer when he got the report on me. I said, Brother Overseer, what do I need to do? He said, you go back and you tell your local church they didn't hire you and they can't fire you. So I came back and told those group of people that. What are you telling me? I'm still here and they're gone. Amen. Amen, Sister Lisa. Amen. Huh? Amen, Sister Yvonne. Amen, Sister Claire Bell. Amen, Sister Sarvis. We're still here. Amen, Sister Ann. We're still here, honey. Hallelujah. Let them talk about us all they want, Sister Neely. It's okay, because I know who loves me, and I love him, and I'm inside of him, and he's inside of me. And whom I have believed. It's okay. Huh? The same thing it took to get you in the box is the same thing it'll take to keep you in the box. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Yeah, I've been on my knees before him this week. You can believe it. Because I'm seeing a generation of Christians that's losing out every day. I'm seeing a generation of people that are in the church, but they're not in Christ. I, let me say that again. I said, I'm seeing a lot of people today, Pastor Williams, in church, but they're no longer in Christ. Brother Small, this is some of that Emmanuel Holiness preaching. It'll either get you right or you'll get left. Amen, Sister Jane. I shared on Wednesday night. I was listening to, listening to Brother Jimmy Jones. I shared this with the folks Wednesday night. He was preaching a message in 2014. said, why don't we have church like we used to? Because people don't want it like we used to have it. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Because people don't want it anymore. It's offensive. Huh? It's offensive. Huh? Well, preacher, I just, oh man, it's just so uncomfortable to walk around in Jesus all the time. I have no problem with that. Because as long as I'm in him and he's in me, I shall ask what I will. And it shall be given of my Father who art in heaven. Huh? Huh? Yeah. He got to go with me everywhere I go, right? Is, is that right? Huh? If I can't be all in your life, he said I'll be none. Huh? Come on, church. Well, preacher, you just damper everything. Boo, 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 boo. I can have a good time. Uh, I went down to Ocean Lakes Campground yesterday with, to celebrate my daughter's 35th birthday. Did I have a good time? Yeah, I had a good time. I didn't have to act like nobody else. I didn't have to do what everybody else did. Just me, just me. Just me. 
me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked. What God Almighty? Woo! Hey, man! Boy, I tell you what, it's good to be in Jesus, is it? Come on, church! Make some noise! Hey, you might not be at the Panthers game right now, Brother Mike, but we can still make some noise. Hello. Huh? I can still praise him no matter where I'm at, Sister Deborah. Huh? Boy, I've been walking around in Walmart and get a phone call and get happy. Praise God. I ain't care if I buy two loaves of bread instead of one. Amen. And give the second one away to somebody because I'm in Jesus. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, this is good preaching whether y'all like me or not. Huh? Sister Carter, stand up and praise him right where you're at. Stand up and praise him, sister. Go ahead and praise him. It's okay. Huh? Sister Deborah, stand up on this side and praise him. My God, hallelujah. I wish I had about 10 more people to join them right now. Come on, somebody. Glory. Glory. Go ahead, Holy Ghost. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Got to stay in him, folks. Got to stay in him. Got to stay in him. Got to stay in him. If ye abide in me and I abide in you. Why? Because the branches cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. You see, this is the kind of preaching I was brought up on, folks. Where a man in a pair of bib overhauls knew what the gospel was and lived it every day. Huh? We've got a problem today, folks, in the church. We only want to be in Him when it's convenient. When you get a word from the doctor, you're in four stage cancer and you can't hardly make it. Huh? Found out this week one of my sons is on heroin. Huh? We want to pick him up and use him like a rag doll. We want to treat him like he's somebody when we need him. And when we don't, he's a nothing, he's a nobody. We need the church when we're in trouble, but when we ain't, we don't need the church. Huh? Is this good preaching or not? This kind of preaching will do two, one or two things. It'll bring you in or it'll drive you out. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to stay in. I'm going to stay in if I have to stay right by myself. Huh? <laughs> Where's my brother? Brother Marty, uh, Brother Anthony, I think he's in the back. These guys are foremans on their jobs. Look out for me a job, will you? I might need one. Huh? But it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Jesus loves me 
This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he... Somebody praise him in the house. Somebody praise him in the house. Holy Ghost of God. We're his. As long as we stay in him. And he in us. Woo, I feel your Holy Ghost in this place. Woo. Oh, glory. Shadakaneo Rande Lokono. Hey, Shande Ye Kono Shai La No Mosi. I hear the thought in my spirit right now. Oh, I hear the thought in my spirit saying, Preacher, you don't tell me what to do. Uh, you don't have to listen to me, honey. But one day you'll wish you did listen to me. Because one day every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess. Holy Ghost is ministering to somebody in this place right now. I said the Holy Ghost is ministering to somebody in this place right now. He's wooing. He's drawing you this Sunday morning. Come whosoever will. Come while the Spirit of the Lord is calling you to get in Him. And he in you. Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost say that you have been given his word. What will you do with it? Mm. He said you've been given my word. What will you do with it? The Holy Ghost of God is speaking to somebody in this place. Whosoever will come, get in Him, and He in you. Abide in the vine. For without the vine ye can do nothing. Without the vine the branches will wither. And die and be thrown into the fire. When you're trying to live two ways it will never work my friend. You're either in him. Or you're not in Him. You're either for Him or you are against Him. 
Salt water and fresh water don't mix, folks. Jesus said in John's gospel, ye are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and hide it under a bush. But he'll put it on a candlestick and he'll hold it up for the world to see. You'll get in him and you'll walk around with him everywhere you go, honey. For Jesus said, if ye are ashamed of me on earth, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father who art in heaven. Is that the word, folks? I'm giving you nothing but the word today. Huh? You're either in him all the time or you're in him none of the time. You cannot have it both ways, my friend. Huh? You see, when I, when I brought this little float thing in here this morning, boy, this is so good. Thank you. Well, I got to close. But Andrew looked at me and went to grinning. You know why? He knew this float. Because it's his. Are you getting me? Huh? See, 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 Brother Hunt, when we walk around in Christ, people will look at us and go to greening. <laughs> hey, preach, Brother John, preach. You know why? Because they're going to look at us and they're going to notice something. And special, Brother Jody, if they got a kindred spirit. They, 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 oh, I got to quit. They'll look at you and say, glory to God. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, my son? Huh? You know why? Because they didn't see me. They saw him that is around me. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Ah. Oh. What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling you, you got to stay in him, folks. If you go to the mountain, stay with him. Stay in him. If you go to the beach, stay in him. Huh? Sister Marie, I better not catch you in a two-piece. Huh? The Bible said, rebuke. And then exhort, and I tell you, put your clothes on. Huh? Do you love Jesus this morning, folks? I know you may say that's a little simple thing, but it brought out a great message. And it's the truth, preacher. That's right. We've got to stay in him, folks. We've got to stay in him, folks. Huh? Listen, just because you get around your little friends and your buddies that want to lie... Tell jokes. Huh? Don't you come out of him just because of that mess. Stay in him. Be that light that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. Huh? Be that one that will exalt Christ when everybody else turns away from Christ. Be that one. Be that one. Be that one. That'll stand out no matter where you are at. I love you this morning. I love you this morning. I hope and pray you'll take this word of God and hide it in your heart. Abide in him. I still didn't get to no further in Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, this new creature, old things are passed away. I didn't get to none of that, but I hope you got the gist of it this morning. I, I just, it's just in my spirit to tell us to stay in Christ. Listen, I'm going to leave one thought with you. Just because everybody else does it, doesn't make it right. Just because old Joe Blow over yonder says it's okay. 
See, that's what happened just this week to a story that was related to me, and I won't go into details, but the story was related to me, amen, and a part of it is just because somebody told him it was okay. He didn't go to the book and find out what the book said. He come out all happy and, and just, woo! Told a Christian buddy of mine, I'm happy now. I understand because so-and-so told me. My buddy went to looking through this book and sending him all kinds of scriptures. He said, okay, what do you do with all this? Huh? You better be careful what people tell you, folks. Brother Mark, we better get in the book and stay. Huh? My wife's sister's boy is a psychologist, and he's a Christian. Sitting and talking with him yesterday, see, we don't always agree. Because he's a young fella. He's into psychology. He likes to change everything and do this and do that. And, huh? God help us. Huh? Yeah, he's over my head there for a little bit, and he started telling me some scriptures, and it didn't read the way this one said, you know. And I said, are you talking about Psalm so-and-so? Are you talking about Psalms 51 where David sinned against the Lord? So you can put it in other terminology, but I know where you're at, buddy. <laughs> Sister Shirley, I've been around the block a few times. Huh? And I'm showing it with these wrinkles and, 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 and square crow feet or whatever you call them things around your eyeballs. Huh? Is it what, Sister? Crow. Crow's feet. What did I say? Scarecrow? <laughs> Sometimes I probably look like one. <laughs> they, I like that word, Brother Small. Brother Small said battle scars. <laughs> huh? Huh? That's okay, sister. He'll take care of me. Huh? I might get thin, sister, but as long as I stay in him, <laughs> he'll stay in me. Hey, man, do you love him? Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Love him this morning. Amen, Sister Jane. Amen. I love you, sis. Hallelujah. You know, we go and sit on her front porch, my wife and I, sometimes. We love to talk about Jesus, don't we, sister? Yes, we do. Hallelujah. God is good to us this morning.